the living cave. I wanted it to actually feel living, so I envisioned these little snakes that would, you know, cruise around the caves. They also poop the actual ores that players have to mine, uh, and they're collectible themselves later on the island. So these are complicated because how the question is how do you pick which block they're gonna you know go to next and it's because it's not totally random if it was totally random it wouldn't look as good it would just be like static uh they wouldn't look like snakes so how this works is that there is the snake let's say this is the snake and it goes in a direction so it goes like this way and it has an internal yaw direction that it goes and when this yaw it's, it tilts a little bit from side to side usually it's 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 sort of random but it's, it's gonna it's gonna slowly tilt one way and then slither the other way and as soon as like it starts from its head and when 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 it slithers this way as soon as it's like turned enough it's gonna select this block instead of the one forward and then this becomes a new direction. So it'll go this way, and then as this tilts a little bit, it'll, it'll start going this way. Um, but what's complicated about it is what happens when the snake hits the wall. Because if you just <laughs> follow the yaw, the direction, you're going through the wall. And I want them to go, you know, um, across the room like this. I did envision like them um, when looking in a corridor spinning like this, and sometimes they do. Uh, you'll have to see in game. <laughs> but yeah, so how this works is that I'm finding the normal of the plane that the snake is sitting on. So the normal is like a mathematical mathematical term for. Um... So this is a plane. Not a flying plane, but I mean like a plane in space. And the normal is like the arrow that points out. Visualized in Minecraft, um, if this is the ground, the ground plane, the normal is up. If this is the side, like I'm looking at this wall, its normal is this. So as the the snake go this way it's normal is up and then as soon as it hits the wall i do a 3d rotation based on the normal of the plane it's on to know that now the yaw is this way and the the, the, the snake continues and it works on diagonals and it works on all the surfaces in the cave These spiders um, are not simple. First off, all of the vacuum things are not simple, just because the vacuum is a hold right-click ability, meaning that from discrete interact packets, I have to make this charge up, like continuous power function for the vacuum. But also, these spiders actually have physics, which was a terrible, terrible choice. I didn't actually want to embed a physics library in the Skyblock plugin, so I just had to go and manually write some awful, awful code. Not awful because it's bad, uh, hard, it's, it's awful because I wrote some terrible code. But anyway, it's complicated to do this physics thing because this spider is attached, right? So it actually works when you just click it. If I click it, you can see it goes back and forth. And then if I start vacuuming, it applies a power vector towards me. It doesn't even work well, but it looks kind of cool. I shouldn't have done this. These ore pickups are complicated for two reasons. Um, first one is sure, the visual effect itself. Um, it's these particles that rotate and rotate and there's the colors that uh, 
have HSV randomization. But the rotation thing is not that bad because they've done many of these particles effects just like the ones on the Shy. Um, I can actually show you what the code looks like for this particle effect. This is how the position is determined around its center. Uh, I just add the point to the center. It's um, a cyclic because it's pi cyclic rotation of the x and y axis with different parameters. Turns out it looks like this and you pick it up and it feels good. Um, the second reason it's complicated is because in the requirement for spawning them, um, there can be up to a hundred orb pickups on the island at the same time. You only see, they only spawn when you're like close by to you and you only see them for a certain range, but they stick around for five minutes and they spawn around all the players and there can be 26 players on this island. So yeah, there can be, and there's like a hard cap of a hundred mode pickups like this. And one of the requirements is that no orb pickup can spin up, can spawn within the 20 range, 20 radius range around another orb pickup to like, I don't know, it's, <laughs> so that you don't always have a bunch of them in front of you. You always have to like walk before another one is spawned. Um, so the game is not about picking them up, it's just the game is about, they, they just appear once in a while and it feels good. So for that, the naive approach is to just, when you spawn one, you check all the previous ones for whether they're too close. But the issue is that that doesn't scale very well. Once you have 199 mode pickups, adding the 100 one means you have to check distance with the 99 previous ones. Which, I mean, sure, it could, it would probably work without noticing any TPS drops, but um, just wanted to make it better. So <sighs> there's this thing called Octrees. I'll first show a quad tree. This is a website that re shows a very good representation. Um, basically all the games, the island, basically the game space of the island is split into quads. Like there's this big quad here and then inside of it there's these four corners and then inside of these <laughs> there's these four and four and it's subdivided like this. Um, and it, it forms a tree like this. So you can imagine the mode pickups orbs being like this, uh, a tree. It's a, um, but in 3D, you need an arc tree. And this is the visual representation. With this data structure, it was much more performant to check um, the nearby or the nearest uh, orb pickup to see if this is a valid location. Um, also, I uh, there there's there's like different places in the Skyblock code where I was able to reuse this octree. Um, of course, like an octree doesn't impress anybody who has been working on in video games for a while, who has done physics or whatever. Um, but there's no game engine here; it's just <laughs> Java code above Minecraft. So um, yeah, it was. Uh, fun to implement, let's say. And yeah, like when you click an NPC in Skyblock, like if I click this dude, Hound, if there, if you played Skyblock, if there's a player nearby uh, or too many players around, um, it's actually gonna redirect the click of the player towards the NPC. So this also uses the new Octree thing. The fourth most complicated thing in the rift is the mirrorverse. Is this series of rooms, kind of like portal, which are puzzles centered around this gimmick, the mirror. How it works is, yeah, there's these visual glass blocks, but they don't matter. What actually matters is that there's this invisible line defined in the game's data that's a vector along the mirror. And I just spawn a player on the other side of it. And to compute its location is actually not that complicated. What I do is just find the closest point on that line, the closest point to me on that line, and then it's like about here. That's the point, the one I'm looking at. And then I just do the, uh, 
I just take that, that vector and I add it on the other side. And I rotate the player's yaw, and that's that. It works uh, mathematically on a, a mirror that's in diagonal or up and down. Um, the only thing about the up and down is I uh, apply, I think it's, it's down there. So there's this puzzle, this other puzzle. There's these mobs. Um, yeah, up and down, I apply dinner bone on the uh, mirror copy um, so that it's upside down. So I also have to take the player's location off, like dinner bone offset, whatever. Whatever. Um, back here, I will also showcase that there is a um, ray casting that works too. It's if I aim here. Uh, the lever switches on the other side and it works just like my player character I just I, I, I do I take the initial point of the ray cast and I mirror it and I take the bounding box and I also mirror all the points on that and I define all the <laughs> bounding box in the room on the other side and bada bing bada boom uh, everything's mirrored The last complicated thing about the Rift is actually the boundary walls. There's invisible boundaries on the Rift, and to show them when you approach, there's a hologram that spawns in your face. These uh, boundaries are defined with big cuboids. So if I approach here, I know there's uh, another cuboid this way. Um, maybe it's this way. Yeah, this is the edge of a cuboid, and then if I approach over here, there's another cuboid. Uh, splitting the um, river here and these are fancy because this this rolling this roaming hologram will always follow me it's the nearest point on the cuboid and basically across all cuboids I find the nearest point is that the roaming holograms location but also <laughs> if you get close to one of these fixed holograms um, these exist because well they look good on the bridge and you can see them from afar um, so you know there's like a limit there but yeah, if I have my roaming hologram and I get close to one of these fixed holograms, they actually merge. And this will follow me until I go too far from the roaming and it goes back to the fixed. This merge behavior with uh, entity IDs and making it work with the existing hologram framework is uh, not that simple.